Hey, and welcome to a new video. While history classes in school were enjoyable for many, they often left out the intriguing mysteries behind numerous past events. In today's video, we delve into some of the most enigmatic secrets hidden within history's pages. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 19. The Little Ice Age of the 1600s had a profound impact on Europe, leading to the general crisis, a period of wars, famines, and societal upheaval. Historians often attributed these events to societal changes, but a recent study links them to climate change. Scientists, including David Zhang from the University of Hong Kong, studied climate data from 1500 to 1800, finding a strong correlation between climate and human crises. Europe's agrarian economy was greatly affected, as temperature changes directly influence growing conditions. During the harshest period of the Little Ice Age, between 1560 and 1660, immediate effects emerged. Food shortages, health problems, and shorter growing seasons. The contraction of arable land caused malnourishment and a dip in average height. While not a direct cause, temperature fluctuations indirectly triggered wars and social unrest through their impact on grain prices. The Thirty Years' War and other disturbances were tied to changing climates. Did you know that during this time, major rivers like the Thames in London and the Seine in Paris would frequently freeze during winter, leading to frost fairs and unusual activities? In essence, the Little Ice Age's unexpected influence on Europe's history highlights the vulnerability of societies to climate fluctuations. The study's insights have been published in the Proceedings of the Natural Academy of Sciences. Number 18. George Washington, renowned as a founding father and military leader, faced a lesser-known battle throughout his life, chronic dental problems that plagued him from youth to old age. Despite diligent care, his dental woes persisted, offering a different glimpse into his history. Though he diligently brushed his teeth, Washington's dental journey was far from smooth. By the time he became president at 57, he sported full dentures. These weren't wooden, as often believed, but rather a blend of human and cow teeth along with elephant ivory. These dentures, requiring constant adjustment, brought him little comfort. Early on, young Washington, then 23, and amidst the French and Indian War, prioritized dental care. He bought toothbrushes, myrrh tinctures, and tooth powders, but by 24, his first tooth was extracted, followed by years of pain and extractions. Even as a war hero, in 1776, a portrait by Charles Wilson Peale reveals a scar from an abscessed tooth. With several teeth missing, he wore false teeth wired to remaining ones, constantly seeking solutions. At his presidential inauguration in 1789, only one tooth remained. Throughout his term, he acquired four sets of dentures, made of hippopotamus ivory and human teeth. His last tooth, causing distress, was removed. Despite his accomplishments, Washington privately endured dental agony, ultimately dying in 1799 at 67. He spent a fortune on dental care, owned eight sets of dentures, and confronted extractions with resilience. Number 17. In July 1518, the city of Strasbourg and the Holy Roman Empire experienced an astonishing, bewildering event, a dancing plague. The outbreak began when a woman named Frau Trophia stepped into the street and commenced a relentless dance. Her unusual dance continued for almost a week, captivating bystanders, and soon around 30 more people joined in. As days turned into weeks, the dancing epidemic spread, ultimately ensnaring approximately 400 individuals by August. This bizarre and prehistoric occurrence baffled local physicians and onlookers alike. The stage and human professional dancers were brought in, alongside a band to provide music. However, the relentless dancing took a toll. Many participants collapsed from exhaustion, and some even lost their lives due to strokes and heart attacks. The phenomenon finally subsided in September, as the dancers were taken to a mountaintop shrine for prayers of absolution. While the Strasbourg dancing plague might sound like a legend, it's well documented in historical records of the 16th century. This occurrence isn't isolated either. Similar dancing manias were reported in neighboring regions although none match the scale or lethality of the 1518 event. But what compelled people to dance to the point of exhaustion and death? 
Historian John Waller suggests that the superstition around St. Vitus, a saint believed to curse people with such a phenomenon, played a role. Of the theories proposed that the dancers might have been part of a religious cult, or an inadvertently ingested ergot, a toxic mold causing spasms and hallucinations. Number 16. The term Spanish Inquisition has long invoked a sense of apprehension due to its more than three century existence. Let's explore the reasons behind its notoriety and factors contributing to its significant impact. Originating in 1478 under Ferdinand II and Isabel I, the Spanish Inquisition aimed to consolidate authority with a focus on Christians. The Spanish Inquisition was not a novel concept. Earlier Inquisitions laid the groundwork. Its unique impact can be attributed to its duration, which fueled its influence and prominence. Rooted in religious motives, the Spanish Inquisition's objectives shifted over time, yet intertwined with political agendas and economic interests, making its legacy complex and multifaceted. The expansion of the Spanish Inquisition into various spheres of society led to controversies and debates. Its methods evolved, employing both public declarations and investigations to address crimes ranging from religious transgressions to economic misconduct. The Spanish Inquisition shaped a whole era by making sure everyone followed the same religious rules, getting more power and affecting how society worked. The Inquisition changed lots of things in society, like how people practiced religion and who had political power. Number 15. The iconic name of Albert Einstein is synonymous with scientific brilliance, but his personal life has often been shrouded in negative portrayals. However, a recent release of over 3,500 pages of his personal correspondence, offers new insights into the Nobel Prize winning scientist character, challenging some prevailing myths. The collection of letters paint a different picture, highlighting Einstein's generous and affectionate side. Contrary to past beliefs, he was more open about his love affairs to his wives and showed a deeper devotion to his children. The letters provide a fresh perspective on his relationships, shedding light on his previous emotions and experiences. Einstein's contributions to science, particularly the theories of special and general relativity, catapulted him to legendary status. While his scientific achievements are widely acknowledged, these letters offer a glimpse into his personal struggles, joys, and complexities. His marriages, particularly the first to Maleva marriage and the second to his cousin Halsa, were often subject to speculation. The letters revealed a more nuanced view, showing empathy and compassion that contrasts with earlier depictions of him as cold and distant. Interestingly, the letter also reveals Einstein's candidness about his extramarital affairs. His complexities as a father, husband, and scientist are laid out, painting a fuller picture of this remarkable individual. Number 14. The transatlantic slave trade has left a significant mark on history. This somber period sheds light on the stories of countless individuals who endured the tragic sequence of events that led them away from their homes. Beginning with their capture in Africa, these individuals were subjected to perilous journeys to the coast and then onto slave ships, enduring unimaginable hardships. Sold and enslaved in the Americas, they faced numerous challenges. This trade, spanning 366 years, saw around 12.5 million Africans forced into Atlantic ships. The true shock of this trade lies not only in its scale, but also in its impact. Africans were treated as commodities, traded by European merchants. The trade fueled economic growth, shaping societies on multiple continents. Initiated by the Portuguese and Spanish, it gained momentum with the rise of sugar plantations. Africans worked in fields cultivating sugar, tobacco, rice, and more. The British, French, and Dutch, and others also became involved, contributing to its expansion. Over 500,000 Africans were transported to Brazil before 1619, and Britain alone transported 3.5 million to the Americas. Monopoly companies and private traders were responsible for its continuation, transforming various regions and ports. The profits from this trade supported economic development, arts and architecture, influencing the foundation of nations. Number 13. Between 1845 and 1852, Ireland endured a disaster that shook its population and reshaped its future, the Great Famine. This period was marked by starvation, disease, and mass immigration, leaving an indelible mark on the nation. 
the primary trigger was a potato disease that decimated the staple crop that many Irish people depended on. Unlike before, this famine affected the whole country and went on for years, making many people's lives really difficult. About a third of the population relied on potatoes for food, so it was a huge disaster. Even though people knew things were bad, the first attempts to help didn't work well. The Prime Minister, Sir Robert Peel, brought in corn from India to keep the food prices low, and they started projects to help people and create jobs. But it didn't help enough, and things got worse. They tried to reduce tariffs on grain, called the Corn Laws, but that didn't fix things either. The government was struggling, and leaders changed, making it hard to respond well. The government thought the famine was a punishment from God, which explained why they didn't help as much as they should. This made things worse because landlords in Ireland had to help, which led to people losing their homes and making the crisis worse. The Great Famine was really devastating. Around 1 million people died from sickness and hunger, and a lot of people left the country. The Irish population got much smaller, and this event caused big changes in politics and society. It was a turning point for Irish nationalists, who started fighting for independence. Number 12. 75 years ago, on February 13, 1945, a catastrophic event unfolded in the German city of Dresden during World War II. British and US aircraft launched a massive bombing attack, dropping nearly 4,000 tons of bombs over the following days. The flames consumed oxygen, suffocating those trying to escape the inferno. While Dresden was not the only city to suffer such destruction, this bombing has stood out as one of the most controversial acts committed by the Allies during the war. The attack raised ethical and strategic questions. Some doubted the military's necessity of targeting Dresden, including British Prime Minister Winston Churchill himself. He expressed concerns about bombing German cities solely to spread terror. Before the bombing, Dresden was renowned for its architectural beauty and cultural significance, yet it was also a vital industrial and transportation hub for the German war machine. The city's factories produced essential supplies for the war effort, and troops and resources flowed through its railways and roads. The decision to attack Dresden was driven by a mix of military strategy and logistical considerations. While it disrupted the German industry and transport, it also led to significant civilian casualties. The discussions around the Allied bombing campaign, of which Dresden was a part, continue to this day. Number 11. Today, Fanta is one of the world's most recognizable and beloved soft drinks, known for its vibrant colors and cheerful advertisements. But its origin story holds surprising and even shocking details. The creation of Fanta can be traced back to the challenging times of Germany during the 1920s. Back then, Robert Woodruff took the helm at the Coca-Cola company with aspirations of global expansion. Under his guidance, Coca-Cola's presence grew internationally, shaping it as an iconic American brand associated with an ideal way of life. However, in the 1930s, the company faced a new era and challenges. Max Keith, as the head of Coca-Cola's German subsidiary, tried to deal with the shifting political situation and keep the company strong. With the outbreak of World War II and increasing economic pressure, Keith took a bold step. He oversaw the creation of Fanta, a soft drink created from food scraps and unconventional ingredients due to wartime rationing. The story takes another twist as the war progresses. Keith's determination to keep the company afloat and his role within the Third Reich allowed Fanta to survive and thrive throughout the war years. Eventually, when Allied forces shut down German factories, Fanta's production ceased and its profits were handed over to Coca-Cola's headquarters. The Fanta we know today evolved from its rebranding as Fanta Orange in the 1950s, distancing itself from its wartime roots. Number 10. The calendar reforms introduced by Peter the Great on January 1st, 1700 might seem like a mundane historical event, but they hold surprising significance. At its core, Peter's calendar reform aimed to align Russia with the rest of Europe in terms of timekeeping. However, the motivations and justifications behind this seemingly administrative change were much deeper. The mandated New Year celebrations were more than just festivities. They held a symbolic value for Russia's relationship with the West, the Orthodox Church's role in the state, and the ruler's authority. To understand this fully, it's crucial to recall the Gregorian calendar reform of 1582 in Europe. Pope Gregory XIII's reform aimed to synchronize the calendar with the seasons. 
highlighting the deep connection between timekeeping and culture. In Western civilization, the Gregorian calendar plays a pivotal role, heavily influenced by Christianity. Did you know that the main difference between the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar lies in the way they handle leap years? The Julian calendar adds a leap day every four years, while the Gregorian calendar adjusted this rule to skip leap years that are advisable by 100, but not by 400. This correction helps to keep the calendar year more closely aligned with the solar year, which is about 365.2422 days long. Number 9. Ketchup, America's Beloved Condiment, has a surprising origin story. This versatile sauce has been a culinary chameleon, enhancing dishes from burgers to scrambled eggs. Without ketchup, iconic dressings like Russian or Thousand Island and barbecue sauces might not exist, and even a plate of french fries would feel incomplete. The word ketchup itself has sparked various theories about its origins. Some suggest connections to Spanish escabeche, a vinegar-flavored sauce, or Cantonese pancake chop. However, it's clear that the early forms of ketchup had no ties to tomatoes. In fact, the predominant ketchup for much of history was based on mushrooms, not tomatoes. The tomato-infused version of ketchup that we know today came later. It was James Mees' 1812 recipe that marked the emergence of tomato-based ketchup in America. The modern sweet and sour flavor profile that we associate with ketchup came about through the gradual addition of vinegar and sugar, with sugar becoming more prevalent after the Civil War. You may not know this, but on average, a tablespoon of regular ketchup contains about one teaspoon of sugar. Number 8. The Library of Alexandria, though vanished for centuries, remains a potent symbol. While we now have the vast internet as a repository of knowledge, envisioning it can be complex. In contrast, the Library of Alexandria physically stood for 300 years and housed much of humanity's written knowledge. Though some sources claim it contains 700,000 books, that's likely an exaggeration, as the actual number of papyrus scrolls was much smaller. Julius Caesar's 48 BC fire damaged part of the library, but the idea that its destruction set civilization back centuries is an overstatement. Though significant, the library wasn't the sole repository of its content. Other libraries also held many of its works, and the decline of classical culture affected them all. The lost works were largely lesser-known literature, philosophy, and commentaries, fragments of a sophisticated literary culture. For ancient literature scholars, this loss was immeasurable, though. Number 7. The Microwave Oven, now a staple in over 90% of American homes, was actually stumbled upon by accident. Back in 1946, engineer Percy Spencer from Raytheon was testing a magnetron when he noticed his snack had melted. Spencer was known for his problem-solving skills and curiosity, honed from a young age in the Maine wilderness. Despite limited formal education, he had a natural talent for engineering. Starting as a spool mill worker at 12, Spencer quickly delved into electricity and even learned about radio technology while in the Navy. His engineering talents led him to Raytheon, where he played a key role during World War II. He was adept at finding practical solutions to complex problems, such as developing proximity fuses for artillery shells. His accidental discovery of microwave cooking came from his knack for innovation. Raytheon, initially focused on radar and electronics, eventually found itself in the microwave oven business. Number 6. The historical practice of gibbeting is both shocking and disturbing. This macabre tradition involved hanging the bodies of executed criminals in iron cages, often in public view, as a form of posthumous punishment and warning to others. Gibbeting's purpose was to deter crime by displaying the deceased criminal's remains, a chilling reminder of the consequences of deviating from societal norms. This practice was particularly prevalent in England, peaking during the 1740s, and was officially mandated by the 1752 Murder Act. Gibbets, often human-shaped cages, were designed to hold decomposing bodies together, and their eerie swaying and creaking in the wind added to the ghastly spectacle. The decomposing bodies inside attracted insects and birds, transforming the corpses into gruesome skeletons over time. These macabre monuments remained for years, turning into eerie landmarks and even lending their names to roads. Number 5. 
the English language's origin has a fascinating journey, revealed by linguist David Crystal. He explores its evolution from words like row inscribed on a roe deer's bone in the 5th century. English's uniqueness lies in its vast vocabulary borrowed from diverse languages due to its role in science and global reach. Unlike languages with intricate social status expressions, English remains egalitarian. It warmly accepts words from other languages thanks to its history of colonial expansion and global influence. Crystal highlights the dynamic linguistic phenomena of portmanteaus and reduplication, but his interest lies in new words reshaping the language's course, such as Twittersphere. Did you know that today, English is estimated to be spoken by around 1.35 billion people globally, which accounts for approximately 17% of the world's population? Number 4. The Japanese-American Internment During World War II stands as a poignant chapter in American history. This dark episode was the culmination of decades of discriminatory treatment towards Asian immigrants and their descendants in the United States. The attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941 heightened suspicions that Japanese Americans might pose a threat to national security. Despite a lack of concrete evidence, the US government forcibly relocated around 120,000 Japanese Americans to detention camps. More than 1,200 Japanese community leaders were arrested immediately after Pearl Harbor, and Japanese bank accounts were frozen, leaving families financially crippled. While the internment mainly impacted Japanese Americans on the mainland, around 200,000 Japanese Americans resided in Hawaii, then a U.S. territory. This diversity in experiences highlights the varying ways in which people's lives were disrupted by this unjust policy. The Civil Liberties Act of 1988 offered a formal apology and reparations to those affected, acknowledging the violation of their rights and freedoms. Number 3. Around 40 years ago, China experienced a devastating famine that remains one of the largest human tragedies in history. Between 1959 and 1961, approximately 30 million people succumbed to starvation, with an equal number of births lost or delayed. This immense famine was not a result of natural causes, but was primarily man-made, a striking example of how ideological decisions can lead to catastrophic outcomes, comparable to the toll of two world wars. Mao Zedong's pursuit of the Great Leap Forward was the root cause of this calamity. Driven by the conviction to rapidly advance the country's economy, Mao championed the production of steel as a symbol of progress. However, this led to the diversion of tens of millions of peasants, from farming to iron mining and metal smelting, severely disrupting food production. Peasants were forced to abandon private farming, leading to a decline in grain cultivation, the main source of sustenance. Number 2. The Mau Mau Uprising was a significant historical event that unfolded in Kenya during the early 1950s. It originated from deep-seated grievances among the Kikuyu tribe, who felt marginalized and mistreated by European settlers who had taken over their ancestral lands. As the settlers established themselves in the fertile central highlands, they displaced the Kikuyu people, leading to discontent and displacement. The resentment escalated, fueled by the lack of political representation and economic disparity. The secret society known as Mau Mau emerged as a paramilitary force, channeling the Kikuyu frustrations into attacks against both European settlers and Kikuyu local to the government. The British colonial authorities responded with force, imposing a state of emergency in 1952 and detaining prominent Mau Mau leaders, including Jomo Kenyatta, who would later become Kenya's president. The British military undertook operations to quell the rebellion, employing tactics such as mass arrests, detentions, and intelligence efforts to infiltrate Mau Mau ranks. Number 1. The Racial Background of Cleopatra, the Iconic Queen of Egypt has been a topic of debate for years. Despite lacking credible evidence, theories about her being racially black African have persisted. However, historical scrutiny reveals a different story. Cleopatra was born into a dynasty of Egyptian kings, tracing her lineage back to Ptolemy I, a Macedonian Greek. This ancestry continued through six generations, until Cleopatra's father. While some uncertainty arises about her grandmother's origin, evidence suggests that she may have had Egyptian roots. 
Cleopatra's mother, however, is likely to have been of Macedonian Greek descent, possibly with some Egyptian blood. Cleopatra's linguistic skills in both Greek and Egyptian further suggest close association with Egyptian speakers, perhaps her mother. Cleopatra VII is often remembered for a captivating allure and legendary relationships with powerful men like Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony. Her intelligence, linguistic talents, and political acumen were remarkable, contributing to her efforts to maintain Egypt's independence within the Roman Empire. Which relatively unknown fact surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.